backwards on your calculator if I gave you the value what's the angle so if you take a look at your calculator right this one is what Zara pointed out to us yesterday was that above sine cosine and tangent okay above sine cosine and tangent there are the inverse functions repeat after me inverse functions yeah so that sine negative one is inverse sine repeat after me inverse sine yeah, so when you read that, you say sine, inverse sine, or you can also say sine inverse, either way, right? Everybody know what you're talking about. The sine inverse takes you back to what the angle was in the first place. So the main thing is that to find the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent, they will help you find the, uh, the angle. So again, the inverse gives the angle okay the inverse will give you the angle when you use the inverse button okay make sure your calculator is in degrees I think we did that yesterday so for example to find the angle between 0 and 90 so it's gonna be an acute angle that's not a big deal to find the to, to find the angle that gave you 92 point no, 0.9211 right all you have to do is type in the value into your calculator so type in that value, 0.921854056. Okay, type in that whole value. And then you hit second. That should work out. Then hit the second button because it has to be the top. So you go second and then sign. Oh, sorry. So it's so, so second cosine. Sorry about that. Second cosine. Sorry. So 0 0.921854056. Wait, 921854056. Yeah. So second cosine is what we're doing. Thanks. So about 22.9 degrees. Yeah. Let's show that on the paper. So for example, again, to find the angle. It's going to be the inverse cosine of 0 0.921854056, something, something. You hit inverse cosine on your calculator, so the angle is about 22.9 degrees. Hey. hey. Yeah. But, Fleck, there's no cotangent in your calculator. Yes, there is. Cotangent is just... 1 divided by 10. All right, so bear with me. Bear with me. Here we go. To find the angle, you need to do the inverse cotangent. Oops, sorry. So the inverse cotangent of 1.4466474. Well, there's no cotangent button on your calculator, so you just go 1 divided by the inverse tan of 1.4466474, okay? Again, like this time, if you have the little dinky calculator, you have to remember to hit equals at the end. So let's see, right? So it's 1 divided by, okay? So if you go 1 and then the divided by, then you have to put in the value. So 1.4466. 474, and then you're looking for the second tangent of that, right? That's not the answer. We still have to press enter. Did that work out? Did that not work out? Yeah. Yes. You have to do the 1 divided by first. Yes, you're right. Okay, so that's not the answer. So let's uh, take a look at this again. So I have the homework last night. Yeah. So you have to do the 1 divided by first. So 1 divided by 1.4466474. And then hit enter. 
And then second tan, is that the right one? 34, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's the one. So to do the reciprocal, you have to do the one divided by first. So let me go into this and show you another way to write it. Okay. So another way to write this, you could have also done, you're, you're going to do the inverse tan of 1 over 1.4466474, like that. Do the 1 divided by first, and then hit inverse tan. Yay? And so you should get about 34.65 degrees-ish. Ish. Yay? Okay. I want you to practice six times. I want you to practice six times. I'll give you approximately mm, three or four minutes to do so. When you're done, just hang tight. Wait for the rest of the instructions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see how you did. The ones where you didn't have to do the inverse, it should be pretty straightforward. So tangent, sine, and cosine were straightforward. Just second sine, second tan, second cosine. How was that? Oh, did you hit? Did you hit second tan, second sine? You gotta do that to get the uh, to get the inverse. Right? Because some of them, like, uh, si no, sign's good. Go sign's good. Yeah. Did you fi figure it out there, William? Sign's good. Got it? Okay. For the inverses, you have to do one divided by a number that hit equals, then hit second sine, second cosine. So, secant, secant, cosecant were the extra ones. How did you do? It's good. Okay, oh, you know, you do have a homework quiz tomorrow. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. All right, here we go. If you're comfortable using the calculator, then we can proceed. If you're not comfortable, then make sure you let me know. We can sell your calculator buttons. Yeah. For which one? For the last one, this one? Hit second cosine. No, it's not, it's not reciprocal. So this is just straight cosine. So hit second cosine and do that. Okay. All right. What? Max, did you say word problems? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. You ever go down the street and then there's that big yellow sign and there's a truck at an angle? It's supposed to be a warning sign, right? It's talking about the grade resistance of that truck, right? Or, or, or the truck on the street. So here's the deal. When a car, relax, it's the easiest formula ever. Here we go. When a car travels uphill or downhill on a highway, it, it uh, experiences this force called gravity. Gravity. Yeah, we're hitting a little physics today with this. This is good. Yay? Now, this experience that you're experiencing is called the grade resistance. Okay, so when you're climbing on a hill, you know this from like running or just walking upstairs, right? If you're walking upstairs, it's way harder than walking downstairs because you're experiencing that force of gravity, right? So it is modeled by this equation right here. Yeah? Okay. And uh, the equation will be given to you on the test. You don't have to worry about memorizing it. But really what it says is that force is equal to W times sine of theta, where theta is the grade of the, the, the steepness of the uh, hill. And then W is the weight of the automobile. Yeah, so it's the weight times the sine of the angle, okay? If the, uh, uh, if the car is moving uphill, then you can see your angle is going to be a positive angle, so your theta is going to be greater than zero degrees. And if it's moving downhill, you'll have a negative angle, so theta will be less than zero degrees. Okay? So, we have F 
W and theta. There's three variables, right? You're going to know two. You probably have to solve for one of them. No big deal. Here we go. In part A, we're going to calculate the force to the nearest 10 pounds. That means we're going to round a little bit. For a 5,500-pound car traveling at a grade of 3.9 degrees. So we're looking for F. What are we given? Mm. There's the W. This is the theta. It says it's the theta. Right? So the equation goes F is equal to W times sine theta. So 5,500, bless you, times sine of 3.9 degrees. Yay. And you literally just type that into your calculator. Um, Josh, you just type it in the way you see it. And also, uh, Juan. For the rest of us, this looks something like this, right? You go, you got to be careful because you have to hit enter. So 5,500 times 3.9 sine, but then you have to hit enter. Yay? Okay, so to the nearest 10 pounds, what's the force? About to the nearest 10 pounds. So you got to round to the nearest 10 pounds. So is it closer to 370 or 380? Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's to the nearest 10 pounds. If you forget to round on your test, I'm not too worried. But just so you know, the yeah, answer in the back of the book, if they tell you to round, they're going to be rounding. Okay? So this is about, uh, whoa, hello. Yeah. This is about 374 point something something. So it's about 370 pounds, right, to the nearest pounds. So that's the force of, the, of gravity that's pulling on that car, about 370 pounds. Yeah. You know, it's like having a football player sit on you. It's all good. Yeah. Here we go. Let's try a downhill grade, right? If you're going downhill, gravity is helping you. So is the weight going to be more or less? Or not more or less? It might even be negative. Let's find out. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're given the weight of the car. So there's W. There's theta. Okay. So F is equal to W times sine theta. So 2,800 times sine of negative 4.8 degrees. Yeah. Okay, let's see if you typed it in correctly. Give me an answer once you know it. Say it again. Hit sign first. Yeah, so you go you go 2.8 times, and then you put the number, and then sign, and then equals. Okay? So about? About negative. Yeah. Negative 200. Oh, my gosh. Really? Uh, you got to be kidding me. It's scary. Wow. Oh, there it is. Ah! We're good. We're good. All right. Really? <laughs> Negative 230 if you round it. Pounds. Right? Did you get that, sir? You got it? Excellent. Okay. Let's go backwards. If I told you the force and the weight, can you tell me what the angle was? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Here we go. Once upon a time, a 2,400-pound car was traveling uphill. The grade resistance was 288. What is the angle of the grade? So we're given W, right? And we have the grade resistance is the force. Luke. All right, never mind. Here we go. F is equal to W times sine theta. I also appreciate video labs. Thank you. Here we go. Yeah, so it's 288 equals 2400 times sine theta.
Okay? Simple. It's just algebra. What do we do? Huh? Oh, what'd you do? Divide it. Thank you, William. Yeah, divide both sides by 2,400. So it's 288 divided by 2,400 is equal to sine theta. Now we just went over this. To solve for the angle, just take the I word, inverse. The inverse. So to solve this problem, you would do the inverse sine of 288 divided by 2400, and that would give you the angle. Okay? So, William already put in the calculator and got the decimal. I would save the decimal for later just in case there might be some rounding error. So, on your calculator, all you have to do is type in the fraction. So, 288 divided by 2400. When you get that point 12, there's no rounding error. You just hit second. So about how many degrees? Yeah, 6.89 degrees. Absolutely. Yeah. So theta is about 6.89 degrees or 6.9, whichever. It's all good. All right. Here we go. You got three to try on your own. Try those three on your own. I'll get back to you in like five minutes. All right, here we go. Let's check each other. Check me too. I don't know. Here we go. A negative angle. Thou shalt not be afraid of negative angles. I'll give you an answer too. So about. It's true. Okay. Okay. Here we go. For number two, a car going downhill. You're looking for the weight of the car this time. Ooh, that was different. Right? You have to divide by the sign. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Two seven seven one. All right. P.S. For these, your answers need to like make sense. So the cars are the thousands of pounds, right? So for this one, they gave you the grade resistance, so that's the force. So you have to look for the weight. So this equation goes one point or one four five equals W times sine of negative three. So you just have to divide this by sine of negative three to cancel it. When you plug it into your calculator, this divided by the value sign enter. Yeah. That's how you would get it. It's good? Okay. Oh my. Here we go. Uh, you know the weight, you know the resistance, find the angle. Did you get? Ah. And you can tell it's supposed to be negative because the grade resistance is negative. So if the grade resistance is negative, the angle is negative too. Yay? All right. How do you feel? That's good. So if this was on your homework quiz tomorrow, like those questions will be. We ready to go? Yay? Okay. All right. Get started on it. It's only eight questions. If you finish today, go ahead and give it to me.